All right, guys. Our next guest is quite possibly the future of the UFC's heavyweight division, and he's barely even seen the second round and gotten quick finishes in all his wins. At long last, he's headlining UFC London this weekend, but we're still not 100% sure against who. Hopefully, Alexander Volkov. Tom Aspinall, welcome for the very first time to Submission Radio. How are you, mate? And where are you right now? Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. At the moment, I am... uh outside of my home my home is currently engaged so to speak i have three children one is asleep downstairs two are asleep upstairs so i ain't going in there with my loud voice waking nobody up so we've uh we had to opt for the car i'm afraid mm. i thought we were watching like a london version of the batman movie or something and you're just like <laughs> at the front just you know steak just doing a good old-fashioned steak out me and casper love a good old-fashioned steak out on a on a sunday night what it's about nine o'clock this is perfect steak out uh situation for you well i'm outside of my house and next door is uh, my next door neighbor who's disabled so the most excitement i get is watching my disabled neighbor walk past so that's uh that's literally just happened by the way you just missed it and so yeah no no exciting stakeout apart from a disabled neighbor special i thought yeah i was so jumping cast but i thought you were maybe staking out the ufc hq to see who your opponent is going to be because <laughs> imagine you just see like mike tyson's walking into the hq what the hell is going on because you're about six days away from your fight night and uh, not quite knowing who your opponent is going to be is that right or do has there been any updates from what we've heard last uh, no official updates, but I know that Volkov has made it into the country. So I presume with that, that's all systems go, I presume. I know that last week in the UK that the British Boxing Border Control banned all fighters from like th Wednesday or Thursday and they already had Russian fighters in the country. So hopefully that's not going to happen to us. I don't think it should. I'm trying to stay positive about it all. Volkov is here and that the, uh, the treatment he deserves from me, hopefully. Is that because you're, you're sitting out the front of his hotel room that you can confirm this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, think I just saw you looking to the right. You said it too. Yeah, he's here. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, that's What's what he wearing, Tom? Wearing. Break it down for us. Uh, I've seen uh, a few people like keep sending me screenshots of him, like in London and shit. I'm just like, it's fucking weird. I know that he's here. Stop sending me screenshots of him, like walking around the frigging the middle of london yeah but he's, he's in the country he's made it anyway so it's all it's all positive stuff he's coming black and white photos from a zoom in <laughs> telescopic lens so how, how have you handled them because i know that like this is not new to you you've had a lot of last minute switches volkov himself was a switch uh for shamil but how have you handled it man like the fact that we're even having this conversation we're days out what six days out and it's like well he's probably gonna make it i mean how do you stay so calm about all of that uh, well, I've got two choices. I, I can stay calm or I can completely lose my shit and it's still not going to change the, the outcome of it all. So I've opted for the calm option. First of all, I was losing my shit a little bit, but um, like the only person that's going to damage if I lose my shit is myself. So I'm just trying to just trying to keep it, keep a lid on it, as we say. And um, yeah, just just be ready for anything, really. Is it different this time around? It kind of feels like even though it's not on pay-per-view, it feels like a pay-per-view show. Like this is a show that a lot of people are really looking forward to. It's been a while since you guys have been in London and you're the main event, dude. You're the man about town. You don't have to hide in your car most of the time, but maybe you do because people must recognize you now on the street. Are you finding it a bit different compared to sort of the usual feeling going into a UFC card? Yeah, I'm definitely. Uh, I'm definitely feeling the love. That's for sure. Like the people, the people in this country are so supportive of me at the moment. Like I can't. Every time I walk down the street, people are stopping cars, wishing me good luck, and beeping mm. on the way past, and all that shit. Someone the other day actually, um, I was running and I was wearing white socks, and they run past and said, "Change your fucking socks." <laughs> <laughs> and then carried on driving. <laughs> so I don't know. Well, I, I always like wearing some white socks, but uh, apparently uh, not in fashion in my area. But I like it. I like white socks. That's like keys mm. to victory from like a. Is random that like guy. a put down or something over there, or like change your I socks? Don't know. I don't. I, I, it must be. I don't know. I had I had like a <laughs> jogging jogging pants on, and the white socks were like took pulled up high over the pants. You know what I mean? So they were a bit. You were doing yeah, the Darren Till. Obviously. Yeah, I was doing the, well, I don't know if it's the Darren Till. I think that's just like a, 
an English thing. I, think. I don't know. I don't know. But it, they're obviously White Sox mm. uh, on show. They're there, they're there for everyone to see. They're pulled up like towards my knees. So <laughs> right over the pants. Why, why, why do you, why do you guys do that? Why do you guys tuck in your pants and your socks? I, don't, I never understood. Do you guys have things try, that go in there as you run? Like, is there some terrain thing that we don't know about? I, I don't know. I don't know. It's not just when we run. People just uh, people do actually just tuck the pants in the socks. I don't know. I don't know why that is. I do it when I run because uh, like the bottom part of the pants like flap around a little bit around your ankles and it pisses you off. So I just tuck them in. Yeah, I'm mm. a I'm a big fan of tucking in the shirt and the pants as well, especially during a workout. I feel like uh, you know Rocky eighty style man, but. <clears throat> With uh, what I'm, what I'm curious about though, as far as you being so calm, how much of that has to do with also like the tr- not only the training at Team Carbon, but also your overall skill set and like how well rounded you are. Um, I imagine you know maybe like a more one dimensional fighter would be a bit more nervous about oh I've got a completely different style matchup, and I feel like it kind of lends itself well to your style because you are so well rounded. I don't really know. I've I've had like a lot of during my career um right from like my amateur fights the opponent seems to switch a lot i don't know why that is i think i wouldn't say everyone's scared of me because it's not that it just happens to be some kind of weird coincidence but yeah i mean i i'm prepared so what else can i do i can prepare myself i know that i'm ready i have put in some serious work in the gym in multiple gyms as it goes and uh yeah, I'm, feel, I'm feeling great. Like, I feel amazing. So I can only really focus on myself because that's all I can really control. Mm. I mean, how did you find your style? Because people kind of talk about how agile you are, the way you kind of move like a middleweight, your technique. It's kind of you and Gun, people that call the future of the division. How did you actually come about finding and honing your, spa, your style? And um, what did you see as sort of the most important part of getting everything together for you, especially being a heavyweight in the UFC? You know, sometimes I see them focused on one particular aspect or it's more of a physical trait that they bring in there with them. You're very well rounded when you go in there. I don't know. I, I don't know what that is. I guess you'd have to ask my coaches. You'd have to ask my dad, really, because he's the one who started me in this damn sport so um i try i try and be i try and be as agile as i can because um a lot of the heavyweights carry a lot of power so you, you're going to try and not get hit also it helps with not getting taken down if you're pretty light on your feet you can judge the distance very well but i always try to like not let my size hold me back like i try to move i, I think it's because i start when i first started training i wasn't i was nowhere near as big as i am uh, right now so maybe that helped like i started as a small guy and then like as I grew, I just kind of kept the same style and kept working on that. But yeah, I like to watch the small guys fight as well. I don't just think I'm a big slow guy. Like I try and try and mix like all good aspects of MMA in with my style, not just a heavyweight style. Mm. Well, I, I'm just thinking back, and I like me, Casper, a lot of the people watching the show. We've kind of had those eras where we were watching, we were absolutely captivated by, and it, it was before kind of we really got into the sport from different perspectives of interviewing or you fighting. I'm just wondering, what was the era of the UFC or a couple of fighters back in the day that you can think back to watching and being in awe of and kind of almost, you know, trying to go into the gym and even trying to do some of the stuff that you saw them doing back, back in the day when you were sort of younger and a kid, just getting into this whole thing. Oh, I'm just such a massive UFC fan, man. I don't know. I've I, Like UFC has been on, in my, uh, like I said, my dad's been into it for years. He's a, like one of the first UK BJJ black belts. So, mm. uh, it's all, I've, I've been around MMA forever, basically. But I always like watching people who fight. This is going to sound really odd. This is going to sound very odd. But uh, I like watching people who make it fighting kind of look like a dance, if that makes sense. <laughs> if that makes any kind of sense. So, people like Anderson Silva, Israel Adesanya, uh, Nassim Hamed, obviously he's not an MMA fighter, Muhammad Ali, people like that, who they, they just fight with like some crazy rhythm and just make their opponents miss like that. I love that shit. Like, that's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to achieve. So, you, is, it, is it the styling or just the, like, like what is it exactly? Because that's, that's a very interesting thing to focus on uh, as far as like, you know, that almost aesthetic, so to speak. I don't know. It just looks good. I, I think. Um, I think like the last, the last thing that I want to do personally is like uh, go in there and have a war with someone. Like I want that to. Obviously, there's some fights that you have to rely on that, but like for me, that's like a last resort. Like I don't want to. 
like I don't want to get in there and have a street fight. I'm trying to go in there and do a sport and do martial arts and, and let my training take over. Do you know what I mean? I'm not trying to go in there and knock out all my brain cells. Like I'm trying to I'm trying to go in there and have fun and, and show off and, and show how good my training is and how good I am and show the level that I'm at. Not like um like if I need to, like if I can't beat the guy with skill, like obviously I will rely on my toughness and, and stuff like that. But like I feel like a lot of people like lead with lead with that foot and I don't want to I don't want to do that I want my skills and my um like I say I want to look like I'm dancing in there and that's that's like my that's my thing because my moves are they're insane I'll be honest with you the, the moves that I'm busting out unbelievable on the dance floor <laughs> I love it I'm the worst dancer in history so this is this is motivating uh, maybe we can see like a Valentina Shevchenko post fight celebration but in, in, in all seriousness man like you've been a team like you mentioned your father was obviously a massive influence with him being you know one of the UK's first uh, BJJ black belts and then you've been t- at Team Calbon since like you being a teenager what was that like being so young and already training with veterans you know guys like Terry Eden, Paul Kelly Darren Till and you know Mike Grundy and more and do you you remember the first time you actually started having success against these guys i imagine back in the day in the early days it was like oh wow that's oh, that's t- this guy that's that guy and then there would have come a turning point where you're like i'm not just sparring these guys i'm not just a body i'm actually having success against these guys do you remember that moment uh i don't i don't really remember i, I just remember I used to get beat up a lot by everybody <laughs> that's it basically like um like you say, I think that's part of the reason that I'm so calm about stuff is because I've seen all these guys before me like go through all this stuff that um, I'm going through like UFC fighters. I've been around UFC fighters like basically my whole life, especially my whole adult life. So this is all like this fighting stuff. It's all pretty normal to me. You know what I mean? I'm not starstruck by anyone. I'm not overcome by any event. I'm not, I don't look at someone and uh, I'm, I feel starstruck or nothing like that. Like it's all just normal. Like this is just normal life for me. So yeah, but I, as far as winning rounds and stuff, yeah, I got beat up for quite a while. <laughs> I got beat up for a good, a good for a good few years there. Uh, yeah, I, I feel you, man. I, well, I spent years getting beat up by my uh, rusty old razor until I switched to the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0. No more cuts on my balls. Uh, anymore. But actually, we're here to talk about other stuff. Manscaped have their ultra premium shower care pack collection. You'll be like Snake when he's watching Homer uh, drive his car without premium. You'll be looking at your body and be like, she needs premium, dude. Premium. Dennis, why don't you run us through the list of uh, all the sexy products that you've been using uh, on the old bod the other day? Oh, yeah, man. Hey, listen, I try to make a return to some kind of active competition. And this one was a bit, you know, it was basketball. It wasn't anything too crazy. But I noticed how much Manscaped changed my life. So I got in the shower. First of all, the body wash. Unbelievable. As you can see right there, Casper's holding it up. Comes in a big, big sort of nice premium feeling uh, container there where you don't have to sort of switch it out every, you know, every few weeks because there's plenty of these. Just put that in your shower, put it in your bathtub, wherever you want. Fits in nice and smugly. You just quickly put that on your body. Smells great. Then the two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. You know, two-in-one, man. You're saving time there. I chucked that on. It felt great, smelled great, was ready to go. Didn't have much time to have a quick, so I had to do a really quick shower. Popped out. And the thing that I love about this, cast this hydrating body spray. So all you guys watching, guys and girls watching at home right now, know you get out of your Brazilian jiu-jitsu, get out of your boxing, get out of your kickboxing, you're like a dry, dry biscuit. Thanks to Manscaped, you're no longer a dry biscuit. This hydrating body spray, guys, seriously, makes you feel alive after a big workout, after a hot shower, when you wouldn't usually. It takes two seconds, you just put it away from your body, about four centimeters, spray it on you, and all of a sudden you're hydrated, you smell great, and then, of course, the deodorant, the roll-on deodorant. It feels so good, makes you feel great. Really good, you know, I put that on yesterday before my hike in the Dandenongs. H- hung in there, didn't look like I was uh, giving information to the FBI. Not, no sweat patches for the first time in my life. And then, of course, the lip balm cast. The lip balm, we all know you get those dry lips during winter and summer. All of those crazy winds, Manscaped had me covered. It's an unbelievable collection of items that will get you through your day and things that you may not necessarily know you needed but once you have them you can't live without them there you go use the code submission for 20 percent off save some chums uh and you get free shipping with the code submission and a 30-day money-back guarantee if for whatever reason you don't like them which i can't see why you wouldn't that's right it's a life changer and while you guys are looking to make some bones save some bones what about this weekend ufc london 
there is only one place to make some serious money, and that is with our friends at my book. I'm just going to give you guys the deal right up from the top. You can double your first deposit with the code word submission. That's right. You can double your first deposit with the code word submission. But let's just have a look at the odds real quick. Tom Aspinall at a minus 115. Alex Olkanovsky minus 115. What about Dan Hooker versus Arnold Allen? Minus 115 for Dan Hooker, minus 115 for Arnold Allen. So a lot of great odds, a lot of interesting things happening over at my bookie as well. Don't forget, these guys have the best odds for your NBA basketball, your NHL hockey. What about the ch champion leagues odds? All sorts of odds that you guys are looking for. They have all of the best boosted odds, all of the best deals, all the best free bets. There is only one place to go to make all of your betting money. And of course, that is with our friends at my book. I'm going to repeat it one more time. Double your first deposit with a code word submission. You can bet anything, anytime, anywhere with our friends at my bookie cast. That's good because if the odds aren't paying a whole lot, then you just double it and then uh, you get twice the money. Everybody wins. Uh, also, just quickly, how are you watching UFC London? Are you going to your mates and using the dodgy Wi-Fi? Well, if you're going to do that, make sure you're protected, uh, your computer at least, or his TV with a VPN like NordVPN so that, you know, when you're, uh, you know, at your mate's house or maybe you're by yourself, uh, nobody else is in the house and you're cruising the spicy websites and you don't want your internet service provider to know what you're looking at, you turn on NordVPN and that way nobody can track you. Safe browsing because as we all know, incognito mode doesn't really do anything. Also, I've got a million streaming services. I've got Netflix, I've got Binge, I've got Stan, uh, I've got Disney Plus, I think uh, what Amazon, I've got a whole bunch of them. It cost me like $6 billion per month. But I said to my girlfriend, you know what, we're going to cut half of those out because with Nord, you can just uh, switch your geolocation and then you get a whole bunch of other programs that normally aren't available in your location in Netflix. So like I said recently, Breaking Bad, can't watch it in Australia, but you can in the United States. Better Call Saul, can't watch it in Australia. You can in the United States. Rick and Morty, you can't watch it in the US. You can watch it in the UK. Uh, Death Note, the series that, you know, Israel Adesanya loves. Uh, you can't watch it in the UK. You can watch it in Australia and Canada. You know, The Office, Casino Royale, Quantum of Souls. I could go on and on. But all you got to do is uh, hit one button change your location. You've got access to over 5,000 servers in 59 different countries. You've got amazing speed, no bandwidth throttling, uh, no buffering. So you can watch as much as you want and not have to worry about your internet slowing down. Isn't that right, Dennis? Yeah, man. And I love this because over at Nord right now, there's a crazy deal. You guys can use the code word submission or click the link in the description below. Go to nordvpn.com forward slash submission. You can get up to 72% off your NordVPN plan plus one additional month for free. But here's the most important part here, guys, because I know we've signed up to VPNs in the past. We've been disappointed. They took our money and there's nothing that you can do about it. This is completely risk free because Nord has a 30 day money back guarantee. That's right. So you can try it today. If you're unhappy with it, that 30, money back, 30 day money back guarantee will have you sorted. But don't take our word for it. Jump on, try today, 72% off your NordVPN plan plus one additional month for free. Do it right now. But Tom, I'll tell you, man, I can't wait for this main event. I know we're talking about the fact that people are giving you well wishes and also throwing weird comments at your socks all around town. I'm also wondering, man, like, have you learned much from guys like Darren about what's it like to be in a main event of a big UFC event like this back in the old hometown? And has he given you any advice or any of the guys from the gym giving you any sort of nuggets as you go into this main event against Volkov? Yeah, I mean, I try and get advice for as many for as many people as I can. Like, I'm I'm pretty friendly with uh, Mr. Bisping, the UK MMA legend. So, <laughs> Heard of you him. know, I go I go to Bisping for a bit of advice every now and again. And and, uh, and what what does he say you know, to you? Does he does he give good advice? Like swears at me and stuff. Yeah, nothing. Uh, <laughs> must be over beers. He must yeah, have had a few beers when you ask him the advice. Yeah, yeah. No, in all seriousness, like. Um, <laughs> They, they just tell me to treat it like any other fight. Don't put it on like, um, you know, just treat it for what it is. Don't let the occasion overcome you and just treat it for another fight. And that's what I'm doing, man. I'm trying to I'm trying to go in there and enjoy this shit on Saturday. Like, I ain't going to let the occasion, like, overcome me. I'm not starstruck by anyone or anything. Like, I'm going in there to enjoy this stuff because without turning a big damper on the interview, uh, I've lost, like, a... a a few close people to me recently. Sure. Uh, actually, just last week, someone like my age who I grew up with died. And you just it just like humanizes everything for me. It just think, man, you got to take these experiences while they're here and just enjoy them because you never know when like your last day is going to be. Do you know what I mean? So I'm going to go in there Saturday, man, and just just have the time of my life because this is my dream. 
Mm. Wow. How, how does that affect you? I mean, like, I, I don't know how close you were to this person, but I can only imagine like you're focused on something, you know, so big in your career. And then, you know, somebody, somebody's life is, is actually cut short. That's that. Yeah. I, I imagine that would put a lot of things in your mind and, um, be some of it a wake up call, I guess. Yeah. Well, it's, it's very, um, it's, like recently over the last year I've lost like, not none of these people have been like close to me. Do you know what I mean? They've not been like really close friends or anything like that. They're just oh fucking okay, my light's gone off. Sorry. <laughs> these are just um. What's my light gone? I can't get it back on. One sec. You still? Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Th these are just uh. These are just people that like I've been around for like one girl who's just died lived on my mum and dad's street and like I grew up with her and stuff like that and another guy I used to work with another guy I knew from school last year and another guy. These are all people like in the late twenties, early thirties that are dying, man. Uh, all for different reasons, obviously. And yeah, it just kind of, just kind of, you just like fuck, man. I don't know. It just kind of brings everything back to. I don't know. You just kind of realise that this life is not forever, and you need to enjoy it and take these experiences while they're here. Like this on Saturday, not everybody gets this experience, man. Not not. There's so many MMA fighters who I know who don't even make it to the UFC, never mind headline. Mm. So this is what I've been, this is what I've been dreaming for for a long time. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy it. So the pods, I've no idea why I'm, <laughs> my fucking right. technology is terrible. No problem. I do apologize. Go on. You go, Dennis. So Tom, let's just say it is Alexander Volkov this coming weekend. What do you make of him as an opponent at a challenge for you? Oh, he's by far the biggest, um, literally the biggest and uh, the biggest um, and best opponent that I've ever fought. I'm, I know this is an absolutely enormous step up for me from the other opponents. I know that. And obviously, I feel like I'm ready for that. Because we, here we are fighting him in like five, six days time, whatever it is. So uh, he brings so much to the table. Like he, he's so good everywhere. That's why I don't really want an opponent change because I've trained specifically for Volkov. You know, I've, I've brought in so many tall sparring partners. I've been overseas to train and yeah, I think he's an amazing opponent and I've prepared for him and treated him the way he should be treated, which is very serious. Mm. What do you, what do you think a win here gets you? I mean, the division is kind of wide open and uh, you know, people are saying, you know, Tai Tuvas is on a good run, but also you're on a very good run as well. And Volko is very highly ranked. What do you think a win here gets you? Oh, gentlemen, do you want a boring answer? Sure. I'll give you a boring answer. I imagine you're not looking too far forward. Does it, does it rhyme with buying guns? <laughs> that's the one. I'm not looking too far forward because, you know what? I know, I know that if I take my eye off this guy, man, Fucking waking up under them lights with them uh, smelling salts under my nose. Do you know what I mean? I didn't think he passed this guy. Like this guy is seriously dangerous, seriously skilled, and seriously experienced. Like he's very far beyond everyone, anyone that I've ever fought before. So I can't think past this guy. And I, I've noticed, Tom, that like in a lot of your interviews, no matter like who you're fighting, you're always focused on the opponent. Is it kind of one of those? And of course, that's important, but you never really want to talk about what's next ever. Is that kind of one of the sort of mental aspects that you want to be focused on? Like not even in an interview or in, in a discussion, like letting those thoughts get into your mind and just be 100 percent focused on the task at hand? Yeah, probably. And as we were just talking about a moment ago, like um when when's the next moment like we can't i can't be looking too far ahead because we don't know how long this whole life shit is going to last and i know that sounds very uh pessimistic but I'm, I'm looking at it more of an optimistic way and trying to just enjoy the moment that i'm in i'm trying to look forward to saturday i'm not really thinking past that too much you know the, these guys are all very serious guys and if you take your your eye off the ball with anyone in the UFC, you're going to be frigging, the referee's going to be waking you up. Do you know what I mean? And I don't want to be that guy who's like looking, looking past anyone. I'm just trying to focus on, on right now and what I've got in front of me and just try, try and take one step at a time, not just in MMA, but just like in life, life in general, really. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And let's just take this whole thing out of the equation, you being Volkov or whatever happens come this weekend. I'm just curious, if one day you do sort of make it to a title shot, of course, we're trying to be optimistic and we see you as the future of the division. Do you still see Francis Nagano as the champion in your mind or do you believe there's going to be somebody else holding the belt? What do you mean if? 
Well, you don't want it. You don't want me to be like, hey, he's gonna be there. I don't want. I don't no, want to. What do you mean? Well, if when, you when, when, when you're at the title yeah, shot. Hang on, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. We're not looking too far ahead. We're, we're taking your advice. All right, all right. Let, nice, nice. All right, nice. all right. All right. When, 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 when you beat Alexander Volkov, we'll back to the initial <laughs> question then. When you beat Alexander Volkov <laughs> this week? No. Who do you think is going? Do you believe Francis is holding that belt for a while? I guess is the question. No, in this division, it's the this is the craziest division in the craziest sport in the world. How are you going to know? Like, Francis is a seriously dangerous man. But also, the else in the top 10? Do you know what I mean? Like you say, tied to Ivasa there. What a performance. Mm. What a frigging performance he put on against Derek Lewis. Oh, man. Like, if, if he or any of the other guys hit you in the, uh, in the top 10, you're going to sleep. Simple as that. Simple as that, man. If any of them guys hit you, especially someone like Ty, you, you know, he, he holds a punch very well. He takes a punch very well. And I feel like he's very underrated with his skills as well. Like his skills have a lot to lot to answer for. Do you know what I mean? You don't, you don't, you can't just take punches like that just with a tough chin. Like he, uh, th there's a technique to it that he's he's got mastered very well. And um, yeah, there's there's plenty of dangerous guys in the top ten, top five of the heavyweight division. So you never know. But Francis Ngannou is obviously the most dangerous man in the division right now. So you can't look past him. Mm. I got one more just on like, you know, the future and all that kind of stuff. And then we'll, we'll focus back on, you know, present times. But obviously France is having surgeries, having the, the knee uh, reconstruction. I think uh, any day now, and he's going to be out for nine months. What do you think should happen to the division? Like, are you a fan of interim belts? Some people can't stand interim belts. How do you feel about that? I also seen on Instagram that he's having a hair transplant. So that's two surgeries, actually. Is yeah. that, that classed as surgery, a hair transplant? Is what, sorry? Is a, is a hair transplant classed as a surgery or not? Uh, depends, if, uh, depends where you're getting it. Is it not? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I don't know. I guess well, he's, get, he's, getting two, he's getting two surgeries then because I've seen on Instagram he's getting a hair transplant. Yeah. He's going to be a sexy um, beast when he comes back. Oh, man. He could give us all, he could give the rest of us a chance. <laughs> <laughs> For the rest of us, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, I think if. I think, and he's going to be out for a while, then there should be an interim belt. If he's going to be out for a while because of the hair transplant, oh, maybe, maybe not. So you, you cut out there, Tom. So if, if he's having the hair transplant, not necessarily interim, if. if it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if he's having the knee surgery, interim. If he's going to be out for a little bit longer because of the, the transplant, um, yeah, probably not. No interim. Yeah, I feel like it's not fair. He's like Samson. The more hair he has, the more power, and uh, it just can't be at, at, at this Comes point. back with hair. He should just yeah. There should be no inter There should be no dispute. <laughs> yeah. More hair, no dispute, undisputed. I agree. I agree. Just a, just a quick one as we let you go, Tom. Man, when when was the first time you kind of envisioned yourself? headlining UFC London, like sort of going back to like Team Carbon, seeing all these veterans and now, you know, headlining this event. Uh, I, I imagine like when you walk out there, it's just going to be a surreal feeling. It's going to be like the guys yelling, you know, at you from the car times a million. Yeah. I mean, that's what I got into this sport for. Do you know what I mean? Like I have had four fights now in the pandemic time with nobody watching. And although they've been amazing, like, I didn't get into this shit for to have 20 camera people watching and nobody clapping in the audience. Like that's, that's not why I got into this stuff. Like I got into this to fight in the old two with 20,000 people and people going absolutely wild when I walk in or booing or cheering or whatever they're going to do. Like I didn't want, I didn't do this for like a few people to be watching and, and that's it. Like I want to do this for them wild times and not just for memories for myself, but for memories of like fam family and friends and all that kind of, kind of thing people come in watching so yeah it's going to be a good time man and i'm looking forward to it man i cannot wait guys you can check out tom's instagram at tom aspinall official of course he takes off alexander volkov at ufc london this weekend and uh an inspiration to all of us tom i mean really i think a lot of fans really really enjoy the mindset that you bring to the sport and i know there's going to be a lot of young local fans watching this main event getting into the sport because of the effect that you're going to have on them so thank you so much for joining us at the front of Alexander Volkov's house. 
and uh, we appreciate <laughs> we appreciate the time, mate. Thank you so much for taking some time out. I know it's a busy schedule for you, and you're about to kick off another crazy UFC fight week. It means a lot to us that you came on and made your submission radio debut at such a busy time. We appreciate you, man. Thank you for having me. And something else that I missed. I know you boys are Australian. Mm. If you're not already watching, it's married at first sight, Australia. Absolutely <laughs> tremen- <laughs> tremendous TV. Tremendous bit of TV. I'm going to go watch it in a minute. I can't wait to watch it. I'll tell, tell you what. I'll tell you. Yeah. John Aiken, Dion, it's all happening. I don't know where you get this information yes. from, Tom, but uh, <laughs> it's, it, it's definitely a show that you and me should watch sometime. <laughs> we'll invite you to a watch party. Oh, for sure. I look forward to it. I look forward to it. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much, Tom. Enjoy maths. Have a great night.